Hi guys, it's France. Welcome to this new journal on Monday, week 122. To warm up, to get myself started, I'm just gluing down some old book pages using soft matte gel on the edges of my new spread. Nothing fancy, just a bit of glue, just some old book pages and gluing them down. For my second layer, I'm going in with some Fenivar's Art Basics modeling paste that I'm applying over a stencil. Not trying to be very precise about it, I just want to have layers and layers and layers of texture. So this is the second layer and once dry I can take away the excess uh, of the book pages. For my third layer, I'm going in with some white crackle again from Fenivar, this time from the Art Extravagance line. And again, just randomly applying it using my palette knife, not trying to go for something very precise. As long as I have texture in the end, I'm happy. Today's video is about 20 minutes long and it took me an hour and a half to get it done. I left it to dry by itself, no heat gun this time. And once it's dry, I'm going in for the next layer, which this time will be micro beads. So I'm using some soft matte gel applied with a paintbrush to give it uh, something to stick on. And then just dropping down some of those micro beads. I'm leaving this aside to dry and meanwhile I can get some strips of paper ready that I want to use for the background as well. I'm going around with some ink to take down the white of the edge. And once I'm done with this, I can start gluing them down. I want the right side to look more concentrated than the left side, a bit like a sound wave uh, getting closer and closer. So I'm gluing my strips more and more together on the right side. Next I'm going in with some um, heavy gesso 
again from the Art Basics line, to which I'm adding a little bit of water to make it easier to apply it on everything. Now I don't want to saturate all the cracks that I have in the white crackles, so I'm keeping it very light. And I'm insisting a bit more on the strips of paper. I'm getting some Color Art Clear Glaze ready, to which I'm adding some primary elements, uh, pigment powders. These are from my color sets by Color Art. Applying a first color only to the edges, to which I will be adding some water to blend everything down. And now I'm going back in with a second color and later on with a third color, each color being darker than the previous one. And it doesn't look like that, but it is. <laughs> Now that the first side is completely dried, I can do the same thing on the other side. So first going in with uh, my lightest color, blending it with some water and then adding the two darker colors. The darker the color, the less surface I cover with it. And as I still have some color over, I can go in very lightly 
applying it with my finger to make the texture pop a little bit more. I'm defining the edges a bit more using uh, Donna Salazar's Mixed Media Inks Chocks, which is a permanent ink that I'm applying using a blending tool and I'm also using it to go over the texture a bit more, again to accentuate it. This is a leftover piece of plaster strip, which is already colorized and I decided to add it to my spread. So I'm just fraying the edges, which is a very fun thing to do with uh, plaster because the result is always great, even if it's a very... Well, it leaves a lot of dust behind it, but that's okay because we love the result, right? And these are some leftover pieces of cambric, same thing, they're already being colorized. Um, so I'm just going to use them on my spread. And of course I want to use my sewing machine to put everything together. Once it's done, I can decide how big or how small I want to have this piece, so I decided to cut some, some of it away to leave some of the threads stick out. Before gluing um, this piece down, I want to add some stamping. So first I'm using my typewriter alphabet by Stampotique and some mixed media inks chocks just to stamp on the strips of paper to make them uh, stand out a bit more. And as long as I'm stamping, I want to add some more stamping, so I'm also going in with my Vintage Bill, also by Stampatique. Just on the edges, very lightly. And then same thing with my Optique stamp. Now, I also want to use these rusted washers, um, which was a birthday gift by my son, who is now nine. He got them himself at the do-it-yourself store and he rusted them himself, which was a very, very touching gift. I cried when I received it because, well, that's just amazing that he thought that it, that it um, would make me happy and he was right, it made me happy. Um, so I also want to make it look like the rust of the washers has run down on the paper. This time I'm not using autumn leaf. I'm using a more orangey color, which is um, ginger peach, but you can find the complete list of details of colors and other on my blog as usual. I'm keeping it very, very light, just as if, yeah, um, time and rain made uh, the rust seep through everything and run down the paper. 
but I didn't think it was enough. I needed some more of that orangey color. So I'm going over the left page and you'll see in a minute that, that I will add even more of that orangey accent on the spread. So I really want more orange. So I'm using that same um, orange color in Radiant Rain, also from Color Art, to add some accents on the texture of the background. And now I can glue down my focal point. I was missing some black splatters, so I'm using some silk, adding some water to it, just watering it down, and adding some black splatters to my spread. Now to make those washers a bit more interesting, I'm also adding some details to them. First I'm adding a mini tiny photo of a little boy on the middle washer. Already going in with my date stamp, though I know I'm not done yet, because I also want to add something to those two other washers um, to draw the attention to the middle one. So I'm preparing two eeny meeny tiny strips of paper. Which I want to glue on top of the two others. I'm using the first one to make a second one of the same size. And now I can glue them down on 3D foam. I'm still missing a tiny heart now, as I already have a lot of texture on my paper, I don't want to use my regular tiny little heart, which would be two-dimensional. So I'm using a stamped version, just colorized with Copic markers. Once it's trimmed and glued down, I also add a little bit of Glimmer Glaze by Tattered Angels, which will give it a bit more dimension so that it, it doesn't stay too flat compared to all the other dimension that I have going on on my spread. That's about it for today. I hope you liked today's video. If so, don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Both are very much appreciated and I hope to be back very, very soon with a new journal on Monday. Thank you for joining me. Have a good one. Bye-bye.